Hey everybody, this is Francesco Abruzzino with The Rogue Rand. Today I want to talk about a simulation. Assimilating immigrants is something that Trump passed, um, touched on yesterday in his speech. And what is it? Is it basically a tall order to ask immigrants to assimilate? Is it an order that should be filled? In the past, we've asked many immigrants that have come here and they've done it successfully. Different cultures, we've asked them to assimilate. So why don't we continue to do that? Why don't we do it with others? When my dad immigrated here, he assimilated. My aunts and uncles, they assimilated. Sure, they kept their Italian culture, they continued to speak Italian, but they learned English. They accepted the American cultures and, and they intertwined that with theirs. And that's why people like Benito Mussolini, he found out the hard way that assimilation worked for America. In 1929, he said, hey, all of you Italians, you guys need to remain loyal to the motherland. The Italians pretty much told him to get lost. They went and fought against uh, Hitler and the Mussolini um, access. Some even fighting in Italy during World War II. So the question is, what, what's changed with these people? Why is it that immigrants no longer feel the need to assimilate? Why do they expect us to adapt their cultural influences. Shouldn't it be the other way around? What's going on here? This, as Kramer would say, it's the bizarre world. You know, like I said, the Italian Americans, they spurned Mussolini when he demanded that all Italian citizens remain Italian citizens. Italian American citizens. No matter what life they li land they live in. They said get lost. When, uh, let me ask you this. Why did the siren song of fascism fall on deaf ears to many of the Italians out there? While the sadistic song of terror today finds a receptive audience among people with long ties here in the United States. And let me suggest, let me suggest something here. Something that's probably is rarely discussed. Yet something that's self-evident. Immigrants were taught to love their new country, to love the United States. At the turn of the last century, the Italian Americans, they poured over in large numbers. They poured through Ellis Island. They encountered what was then called the Americanization, the Americanization program. They were actually taught to love their new country, love America. One driving force behind the assimilationist was the push, was the fear that Italians or even other immigrants from other countries, you know, the Slavs, the Jews, and all of them, would bring in a uh, communist, socialist, anarchist ideas. So they wanted to Americanize them. What's the, why are we doing that today? The immigrants who experienced the Americanization program went on to become full-fledged members of the greatest generation. They endured the Depression. They defeated Nazism defeated fascism. They defeated communism and survived through the Cold War. They met the existential question of the day. No fewer than 14 Italian Americans received the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's a Medal of Honor for bravery. Bravery that they showed during World War II. But it's not happening today and it doesn't happen today because our elites our elites are too far sophisticated to promote something like Americanization as immigrants, refugees, as they come here and they settle here. They are actually taught that this is a racist society. We're all Islamic phobic here in this country and that they're going to be victims. And in fact, much about how they live depends on their status as members of their protected groups there. Is it any, any wonder, any wonder at all, why we have the current situation we have in America? It is an economic axiom that the more you tax or deter something, the less of it you're going to get. While the more you subsidize something, the more you're, there will be of that. So Americans' elites, the elitists, the decision to turn away the patriotic uh, assimilation process and pursue a multicultural model that perpetuates group differences. You know, the cultural and functional segregation of them. We're seeing it now in Germany. Multiculturalism is destroying their country and many countries in Europe. 
This creates societal problems. And it's a societal problem that we've been dealing with for years and that we will continue to deal with for years unless we take action to stop it. Discussion of the issues have nearly become taboo because many of the progressive outs there will pounce on you. They'll beat you up. They'll kick you down in any way if you even bring up the idea of assimilating. We used to assimilate our immigrants, folks. So why? Why did we stop? That's the question. The word assimilation itself was used by great presidents like Washington. They were embraced by our founders. They were used by presidents like Lincoln, Roosevelt, Wilson, Reagan, across party lines. You know, elites, elites in the academy and in the arts, the bureaucracy, the political elites, decide on their own to stop assimilating newcomers and move over to this multiculturalism. Undoing the damage of multiculturalism, affirmative action, and the entire culture of victimhood won't be easy, though. And working only toward cultural and economic integration will not be enough. After all, after all, acts like the Boston bombing or last year's San Bernardino shooter, you know, Saeed Farouk, they were culturally integrated. We all see how that went. We need some patriotic assimilation. That is key here. But first, we need to be able to talk about it without being shouted down. So let's get back to assimilation. Let's make them feel like they're part of our culture. They came here for a reason, folks. This has been Francesco Abrazino with The Rogue Rant.